it is time for another multimeter review and giveaway. Congratulations to Alex from the UK for winning the multimeter from the last video review. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at the big brother of that meter. So there will be a giveaway. And the way it works is 24 hours after this video goes live, I will randomly select a winner from the comment section down below. So if you want a chance to win, just leave a comment. Um, I will give that person that wins 48 hours to reply. If you don't reply within 48 hours, I'm going to move on to someone else. And again, uh, it's going to be completely free, whoever wins this. Uh, I'm not going to ask for shipping or anything like that. So 100% completely free. If someone says you won, but they're asking for shipment money or something, it's a scam. Don't fall for it. Anyways, let's move on. So there will be a coupon code for the model we're looking at today. 25% um, off coupon code down below. So let, uh, let's get into this thing. So it's another three in one multimeter. Um, so it's an oscilloscope, it's a multimeter, and it's a signal generator all in one. And I see some, looks like what, B and C connectors right up on top already. That's nice to see. It's a little bit more uh, professional looking. We'll just take a quick peek around this thing. This is probably going to be a USB charging port, I assume, if I can get it open. Okay, USB-C, nice, yep to recharge the battery which i'm guessing has a built-in rechargeable battery just like the other unit i think i'm going to open this up later on and see what's in there so there is our oh, channel one channel two and gen out okay so our inputs and outputs nice got the regular multimeter leads here and looks like that is everything let's power this thing on and see if it map uh, see if i have to charge it yeah it lights up and we've got some fancy graphics, a little splash screen that comes up. All right, battery indicator shows that it's full. Good. Um, all right, and just to be clear about the giveaway, the giveaway will be for this model, this older, uh, not the older model, but the smaller model that I reviewed in the last video. But today we're going to be looking at this meter, and this is what the coupon code is going to be for. It's going to be for this one here. So everything that is included in the box, the pouch... Looks like we have a owner's manual. This might just be the quick guide. Uh, oscilloscope lead. That looks all right. Oh, BNC with uh, alligators. That would probably be for the uh, output, the uh, signal generator that will come in handy. USB-C charge cable and the multimeter test leads. And I just gotta give these a quick look over pretty basic run-of-the-mill tip there cord doesn't feel too bad but i don't think it's silicone these feel a little bit different than the uh, leads that came with the other version but like i said before they're easily replaceable if you want some better ones and there's the user manual a little bit thicker okay So the, uh, the feel test, we'll start with the feel test. It's uh, solid, feels all right. It's got the rubber on the sides like the other smaller little brother. Now my biggest gripe with the other unit that we reviewed, the smaller one, is the signal generator output can only go to three volts. And with the bigger model, it is improved. This signal generator is supposed to go to five volts, which uh, here's the, yeah, five volts peak to peak for the uh, signal source waveform frequency amplitude. So the voltage output should be five on this unit, which is better, which with, with three volts, you're really limited to what you can do with only three volts. Five volts is better, you know, at least it's TTL level, or hopefully we can light up an LED with it or something. But for the work I do with automotive stuff, I really wish it was 12. We'll play around with it, see if we can do anything with it. I'm noticing the user interface or the uh, and the display looks a little different. Maybe made some improvements. But anyways, yeah, unit feels all right. All right, let's do some uh, some metering here. When the multimeter is turned on, it defaults to voltage DC. I currently have the power supply set to 14 volts, 
And here's the value compared to small gooch and the unity. I have switched over to AC. I am currently feeding it a 14 volt peak to peak 50% duty cycle 200 hertz signal. So I need to switch them all to AC. And these are measuring the RMS. So that's why it's showing five volts. And next let's do, uh, okay, frequencies next. Let's see, yeah, frequencies next on this one. And we'll do frequency on the unit T. And yeah, look at that, they all agree with each other. And next is duty cycle. And you know what? I don't think the unit T does duty cycle. I don't believe it does, so we'll just be looking at the Gucci's, and it is set to 50% duty cycle, and I'd say that's pretty close. I will continue on with the multimeter functions, and then later on I'll jump into the oscilloscope and signal generator. So here we have, I believe it's 150 ohm, 150 ohm resistor. Yep. Works nicely. We'll do diode mode next. Here I have just a general purpose diode. Should get like a 0.6 drop. Yeah. Okay, there's the 0.6. And then reverse, of course, is just going to be open leads. So there's the open leads on diode check. And then a short on diode check. There's your, your voltage across the leads there on the short. Okay, and is there enough voltage to light up an LED on diode check mode? Let's see here. I think the polarity is right. Yes, there is. So you see that? Okay, so the voltage is high enough to check LEDs, which is nice to have that feature. And next is continuity. It's pretty quick. Works fine. Does continuity things. Next, capacitor. And what have we here? I think it's a 100, 100 microfarad capacitor. And uh, here, I'll give it the right polarity. And there it is, 107 microfarads. Now I'm going to try to fumble my way through the oscilloscope function. I have not read the owner's manual. I'm just going to kind of play around with it. I think I got it mostly figured out to switch to oscilloscope mode i just turn on channel one I'm, i am using both channels i have channel two set up also at um 10 000 hertz at five volts i'm going to adjust the time using the arrow buttons here and the amplitude coming down so there we have our channel one is the 10 hertz square wave and channel two is the uh 10 000 hertz ac wave sine wave Next, we're gonna try out the signal generator, waveform generator output. Uh, this meter is currently set to oscilloscope mode. So to enter the mode, the output, we just use the AWG button. And there is our square wave. So this is the square wave output. That's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and go through the different functions or the different uh, waveforms. So we have our triangle and our sine, and then we can adjust the frequency using the keypad buttons with the arrow keys here. So we can just say, we'll change it to 200 Hertz. And if you're bothered by the beeping sound in the utility menu, you can control the turn on and off the beep, and you can adjust the backlight, and then the auto power off function is all in this utility menu. Okay, and then we have our voltage, our pre-selected voltage output. So anywhere from 0 volts to 5 volts, and you have these selections in between. And I believe the duty cycle is locked in. I'm not sure why I can't adjust the duty cycle. I haven't uh, looked into it too much, and I don't want this to turn into a one-hour-long video, so I'm just going to keep it simple and stick to the basics. Here is a 10 hertz square wave, and the meter is directly driving an LED. And I almost forgot to check the current meter capabilities, so this is limited to 10 amps. I have it in uh, the high current mode, and it does give you a little reminder on what jacks to use. So my power supply limited to 2 amps, and there we should have our 2 amps. And yes, we do. All right, next, let's tear this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. 
under the battery door. Uh, it does have a brass insert for the battery door screw, so that's a nice uh, little touch. Uh, there's a pair of 18650s, 2,000 uh, milliamps each. And it looks like to get to the fuses, we'll have to uh, continue a little deeper. All right, with the uh, four screws removed, the back comes off. You do have to pull off the rubber sides. They just uh, kind of clip on. And then that exposes the back of the PCB. Now this PCB is screwed down. Here we have a couple RF shields for channel one and channel two of the oscilloscope. But this allows us access to the fuses and they're not really user serviceable. They are soldered down surface mount fuses. So one of these is the 10 amp. Let's see if I can get a zoom in on this. All right, now focus. Yeah, I've not really got a good focus. Fuse. Fuse one is the 500 milliamp fuse, and this is the main 10 amp current fuse here. And now, of course, the fuses are not impossible to replace. I would suspect the type of person that is using an oscilloscope multimeter probably has a soldering iron and can, and can replace these fuses if needed. Now, your average Joe, who isn't a technician and who doesn't solder all the time, they're going to struggle replacing these fuses, but uh, it's a little... A little disappointing that they're not a little bit more user serviceable on the uh, clips, but uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. And just for shiggles and grins, I did check to see if this waveform generator output would be high enough to spoof a vehicle speed sensor in something like a GM instrument cluster, and it is not. I need closer to 7 volts to uh, trigger a vehicle speed sensor, and 5 just is not quite enough. And because of that, low voltage signal generator output, I will not be replacing my bench top signal generator. But just because it's not right for me doesn't mean it's not right for you. Here's the thing, when I went to tech school in the 90s, something like this would absolutely blow everybody's mind. I mean, to have a signal generator, oscilloscope, and multimeter all in one unit this small would just be amazing. So it is incredible what technology has done in the last few years. Um, and of course, in the 90s, something like this probably would have cost $3,000. Uh, with the coupon code I have below, I think it's around 140. So, I mean, really what you're getting for the money is, is very reasonable. It does make a good multimeter too. So if you're in the market for a multimeter, uh, this is worth considering. And in this video, I just touched on the basics. This thing can do quite a bit more, but I just wanted to cover uh, the three main basic functions. So that is it for today. Good luck on, on the contest. Like I said, just leave a comment down below, and in 24 hours, I'm going to pick someone. Good luck, and thank you for watching.